Thanks a lot, Tim, and thanks everybody for tuning in this afternoon. Trig is a modern purpose company to deliver global food security. We are looking for minerals that are about our food supply. And we're looking in a location that is a low risk in Western Australia. So our head office in Perth, our projects are essentially in our backyard. So really easy for us to execute. It's a strategic land holding. We have over 100%, oh, sorry, we have 100% rights to over 3,500 square kilometres. And they're all quite proximal to each other, the three projects under that. Lake Thrussell is our number one project, and I'm very excited to give you an update about this as we progress through the presentation. It is rapidly developing and to be a large high-grade SOP discovery, and I can't wait to tell you more. This is all about sustainable mining. There's no open pit or waste rock dump in this process. It's about the minerals are already dissolved in the hypersaline brine water of the gold fields. And the way we produce the product is through solar evaporation. So it's a really light environmental footprint overall. Sulfate of potash is particularly important to our food supply because potassium is essential for all living cells. And it provides two of the macronutrients of plant growth, sulfur and potassium, without any detrimental other elements, which is really different to the large market aspect of muriate of potash, which is about 70 million tonnes a year. Sulfate of potash is about 7 million tonnes per year. So it's a niche high value fertiliser and it's also um, you can't substitute it. So there's a lot of products, the high value food groups that need sulfate of potash and you cannot substitute it. There is strong global demand elements. So this is about the mega trends. So growing population, uh, reducing areas of arable land, we're depleting the nutrients in that arable land. So we need to increase the fertilizer use to increase the yields from that land. And importantly, in Australia, we still import all of our potash needs. So our entire agricultural output is reliant on imports of potassium fertilisers. Next slide. Some up trig mining, we listed about 18 months ago. We've just appointed Rod Baxter to the board, who's got a lot of experience in project development and assessment. He's uh, been a managing director of a number of um, engineering firms and really experienced directors. So you can see already we're moving rapidly from an exploration company to setting ourselves up to be a full development company looking at this project. We've also expanded our team. Uh, on that ground. So we have a study manager, Chris Williams, Adam Lloyd is our principal hydrogeologist and he's worked right across all of the sulfate of potash projects in Western Australia. So very experienced and very capable pro uh, hydrogeologist. We also have John Turney, who's a former project director. He's advising us on our chemical engineering aspect. And John Siganek is important on our team, a new appointee. He helped Callium Lakes go all the way from pre-IPO through to project financing. So that's one of our peers that has been through this journey before. John has been there, helped them do that, and he's now on board, very excited about Trick Story and wants to do the same with us. Other key aspects on this slide is our low market cap. When I start to tell you about just what we've got out there in the gold fields, you'll be quite surprised at our valuation there and two and a half million dollars cash in the bank at the end of last quarter. Next slide. So where are we? We are in Western Australia, as I said, all the projects are proximal to each other, east of Laverton, around about 170, 200 kilometers east. Lake Throssell is our primary project sitting there on the Great Central Highway. It is um, right next door to Gruyere, a very large gold mine. So we've got a lot of energy and transport infrastructure right on our doorstep there. Lake Throssell at the moment has an exploration target, but we're about to come out with our inferred mineral resource on that. And I can't wait to share that with you. And uh, we've already drilled Lake Raisin, which has a resource, and then Lake Yao, which is our new project that is on the same trend as Lake Russell. So we're building up this really substantial footprint there, looking at uh, developing a production hub at Lake Russell. Next slide. This is a picture of, oh, okay, previous slide and this slide. You can see uh, just how 
or it starts to show you the scale. This is only just a small portion of Lake Throssell, and they are really big. Between the three projects, we have over 600 square kilometres of player lake, and just below that surface is where the water table starts, and that's what we're targeting. Next slide. And how the water got there is through these paleo channel systems, which just simply means ancient river valleys. It, in Lake Throssell's case, it's been draining the minerals from the Gibson Desert over time where the water has dissolved the minerals, carried them down into the Lake Throssell lower depression area and with the really high evaporation rate that we have in the desert regions of Australia, they've concentrated over time. So there's a really substantial mineral endowment sitting in that water. Lake Yo, as I said, is uh, on that same trend and we're looking at building up this story around Lake Throssell. Next slide. So all importantly, where we've been working lately, we've been very busy. We've done a number of drilling programs which have increased the density of our data to build up for that resource that's forthcoming. We have over a thousand square kilometres of tenure. The one granted tenement that we're working on is just over 300 square kilometres. And the strike extent expands into our applications. To date, the drilling has identified, and you can see that shown really clearly in the gravity survey as well, that we've got this valley system that's around about 100 metres deep and up to five kilometres wide. And that hosts the the gravels and the sands that then in those ore deposits between all of that hosts the water and the mineral deposit. Next slide. This shows the current cross-section interpretation of Throssell. So what we've been learning about it is that we've got these glacial fluvial sediments at the bottom under the lacustrine clay and the player lake surface. So we've got some really great horizons for production of water volume and that then when we're looking at the scale of this can tell us that we might be looking at something quite substantial, a potential multi-decade source of sulphate of potash. And as we set out in that slide, we said in coming weeks, but uh, we will see the, uh, the uh, inferred resource come a little bit sooner than that. Uh, we have uh, high grade results there as well. So this is what's really getting us excited. We've got so many good positive outcomes of all of our exploration program. We can see there we've had up to 14.8 kilograms per cubic metre of sulphate of potash, and that is high grade. And you can see it is just below the surface. You can dig a hole in the lake and put your hand down and touch this water deposit. And as I said before, it is a really big, broad system. The entire lake is mineralized and also that valley, valley underneath it that is feeding the water into the system. What we also have is a really consistent deposit. We're really surprised by this. We've not seen this level of consistency through the peer group, but we're looking at something like 96% of our samples are exceeding some 4,000 milligrams per litre of potassium or nearly nine kilograms per cubic metre of sulphate of potash. That's giving us great confidence that this is a really substantial, high grade, consistent deposit. Next slide. So what do we got underway at the moment? Well, we're about to commence the um, a trenching program, which will take what we're coming out with an inferred resource, we'll start taking that to an indicated resource. We're really confident that this is something that we'll be looking like building. We've already been working on benchtop evaporation trials to determine the process flow sheet and building up our data set to do an economic scoping study. We've also commenced the environmental baselines because we really do believe that this is a substantial project. So we've been out there just last month working on the autumn baseline work We'll follow that up in September and that starts us through the environmental approval process. So Lake Russell really is shaping up to be something quite substantial. We look forward to sharing the inferred resource with you on that uh, shortly and keeping you up to date on all of the, the work that we're doing out there. Next slide. So to sum up, Tree, we've, you can probably barely even see us at the bottom of the graph there with our peer group. We are in the exploration phase, two of our peers there, Callium Lakes and Salt Lake Potash or SO4. They are already in construction and uh, in commissioning phase of their projects, which is very exciting with this new industry for Australia and a domestic source of sulphate of potash for agricultural output. And uh, I can only see upside for Trig. 
Next slide. So to sum up, we are in the low risk jurisdiction of Western Australia. Lake Throssell is the made, we'll have a maiden inferred resource estimate very soon. We'll also update our exploration target just to give you an idea of the potential scale that we have there just at Throssell. There is real potential for this to become a multi-decade operation. It is really well supported by transport energy infrastructure. In fact, the Great Central Road is being upgraded, upgraded and bitumized to become the uh, third highway across the country and the, called the Outback Highway. We have further growth potential at the, at the other lakes, Lake Yo, along Strike or the Paleo Channel of Lake Throssell and also at Lake Brazen. And there's strong global market fundamentals. We all continue to eat food. We all want good quality food and we need sulfate of potash to make it. We have a really motivated team. I'm a mining engineer. I love to build mines. Everyone around me that's coming onto this project are really passionate about what we're doing. And we're really excited to deliver value to shareholders through that. And that slide before where I mentioned Triggs right at the bottom of the up curve, hopefully, that, um, that really excites us too, that we're on this beginning of a journey for Trigg. Thanks, Tim. Thanks, Karen. Um, just be aware you're frozen on screen, but we can hear you loud and clear. So don't worry too much. Um, some questions. Um, Lake Throssell seems to have suitable uh, indicative grades. Could you highlight the size, quality advantages you expect of your exploration target versus some of the local advanced product projects? We're anticipating, so at the moment, the two and a half to 27 million tonnes, if I recall the current expiration target, or it, sorry, the, I started the minimum um, size there is, is a bit different, but it's up to 27 million tonnes. We anticipate that we'll be in that mid range of that target with what will be coming with the inferred resource somewhere in there. Like we're pretty confident that we've got the, the numbers right and we'll look at uh, what else we can have a look at with the expanding that along the Paleo Valley system for the new exploration target. And, and is the goal to develop on your own or, or seek a JV or is there another, another method to kind of fast track what is potentially a high cost evaluation and development stages? Compared to other projects, sulfate of potash, I don't believe is high cost. We've been able to discover and define this for really very little uh, inv investment compared to what it, you, what it would take to find a gold project. We're only drilling to 100 metres below surface, so it's quite efficient when we're out there. The plan at this stage for Trig, you know, it's in our name, Trig Mining, that's what we intend to do. Our purpose is to build mines communities can be proud of. And that is my background. My, I'm a mine builder, so I fully intend to build this. And um, there's a number of um, uh, projects coming online at the moment. How will this impact the, the price? And can you talk to how big the, the actual market is? market's about 7 million tonnes per annum and that's supply constrained. There are many, many projects and many farmers and in fact I believe one of them is online at the moment who would love to use sulfate of potash on his farm but we just can't get our hands on enough of it globally. So that, that's an impact on, um, on, the, you know, on the whole market. It, it really does drive this, to, you know, what am I trying to say? It's just there is so much opportunity for more sulfate of potash, especially natural produced sulfate of potash, because a large portion of that market comes from a chemical process to make up the, that difference. And that creates a really high price floor. So there's a lot of opportunity for the lakes, which are naturally endowed with solar evaporation to enter the market. And we're talking 7 million tonne per annum, growing at 3% per annum. Each project at the moment in Western Australia is around about 100 to 200,000 tonnes per annum. So, you know, we're only having a small impact on that market. And I, I fully believe the Australian product will be a premium product and a high demand for it. And can you talk a little bit more to that kind of environmentally friendly process? Well, it really is um, the process of pumping water out of the ground and through trenching and bores and then putting it into evaporation ponds and harvesting the solar energy. So in Western Australia, we have around about three metres of evaporation, which makes it a, a reasonably rapid process compared to other parts of the world that may only have one metre of evaporation. And that's an advantage for all the projects here in WA. It is, it then needs to be purified, but the, the product produced on the mine site is is farm ready. It can be a highly water soluble product or it can have a value added component to granulate it and that can go into a spreader into broad acre 
applications. So it's um, so just a great process, really, from an environmental perspective. 